Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over section 4.2, an introduction to factoring. Uh, we've got two main goals for this section. Uh, our first goal is we want to be able to factor polynomials whose terms have a common factor. And the second, we want to factor certain polynomials with four terms by grouping. Um, but first, let's, let's work on some vocab. Uh, let's take the polynomial x squared plus 5x plus 6. By the time we get done with these sections on factoring, you guys will be able to tell me that this polynomial can be expressed as the product of x plus 2 times x plus 3. And we can check that. If we use our distributive property, or if we FOIL uh, these, two, these two factors together, x times x would give us an x squared, x times 3 would give us a plus 3x, uh, 2 times x would give us a plus 2x, and 2 times 3 would give us a plus 6. Gather some like terms, x squared plus 5x plus 6, right where we started. So, by factoring, what we want to do is we want to take polynomials like this x squared plus 5x plus 6, and we want to factor this polynomial into the product of two or more smaller polynomials. So this is our original polynomial. These two things that we're multiplying together are called factors. And we would call x plus 2 times x plus 3 the factorization of x squared plus 5x plus 6. So just like how we had terms, uh, how we had terms being mathematical expressions separated by addition, factors are mathematical expressions separated by multiplication. So terms is to addition as factors, as factors, I guess I should be R, terms are to addition as factors are to uh, multiplication. So by factoring polynomials, we want to come up with smaller polynomials that multiply together to equal the big polynomial. So for our first example of this, what we want to do is we're going to factor out a, a common factor, or terms with common factors. What do I mean by that? So let's take this polynomial, 5x cubed minus 15x squared plus 5x. And now take a look at each of our terms. We've got a 5x cubed, we have a negative 15x squared, and we have a 5x. What we want to do is we want to look for something that's in common. If you Let's take a look at the coefficients first. We've got a 5 we've got a negative 15, and we've got a 5. All three of these coefficients are multiples of 5. They all share a common factor of 5, so we want to pull out that common factor of 5. But what else do they have in common? Well, they've got an x cubed, an x squared, and an x. Each of these terms have at least one x. This term has two x's, this term has three x's, but they all have at least one. Since they all have at least one x, we can factor out an x as well. And now we're doing multiplication in reverse. And the way I think of this next step is I go 5x times what is equal to 5x cubed? Well, I need an x squared. Then we move on. 5x times what is a negative 15x squared? I need a negative 3x. And then 5x times what is equal to 5x? Well, we'd have to multiply 5x by a positive 1 in order for it to equal 5x. What we have done at this point is we have factored this polynomial into this polynomial, and it looks better if I write an equal sign because these two things are in fact equal. There we go. That looks a little bit better. 
these two polynomials are equal. All we did was we pulled out what was common from each of them. When you're focusing on these first couple, on the first, the first couple in your homework, this is what we're doing. We're just asking what is common, what can I pull out from, what can I pull out from all of them? So what if we had something like 4y squared minus 8? Okay, we have another polynomial. I always look at my coefficients first. I don't know why, it could be because we always put coefficients in front of variables, but it's what I always do. I always look at my coefficients first. So we're trying to factor this thing. That's, that's what our directions are going to be, just factor. We want to factor this polynomial. Well, looking at our coefficients first, this one is a 4 and this one is an 8. Well, notice how they're both multiples of 4. 4 is 4 times 1, and negative 8 is 4 times negative 2. Since, they bo since both of these coefficients are multiples of 4, we can pull a 4 out. You're going to be using a lot of parentheses in this section. When you factor something out, you need parentheses. Um, notice how this second term doesn't have any y's. So I'm not going to do what I did up here, how I also pulled out an x. This first term has two y's. This term doesn't have any y's. So we can't pull out a common y because there isn't a common y. Well, now I have to ask myself, 4 times what is equal to 4y squared? I go, cool, I need a y squared. And then 4 times y is a negative 8. What's well, negative 2. So we have factored the polynomial on the left. The factorization of 4y squared minus 8 is 4 times the quantity of y squared minus 2. How do you know if you've done these correctly? You can go backwards, you can go in reverse order, kind of like what we did way up here, how I told you this was the factorization of this polynomial, and we checked. We checked by multiplying these two factors together. Well, we can check down here. If we were to check, we want to figure out what 4 times the quantity of y squared minus 2 is. Well, using our distributive property, this 4 would go up in, up into y squared and across subtraction. 4 times y squared is equal to a 4y squared, and 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. You want these two to match. Factors are equivalent statements, they just look a little bit differently. Um, I have, I've always thought of factoring uh, kind of like, kind of like you might molecules. Um, you might call this molecule water, and you might call this H2O. When we're factoring, we're going, we're looking at molecules, and we're asking ourselves what elements make up that molecule. Well, in water, we've got two hydrogens and one oxygen. In x squared plus 5x plus 6, we've got an x plus 2 and an x plus 3. So we're asking ourselves, what are the smaller elements that, that come into play uh, to, to build up to these larger molecules? So let's keep going with these examples. Uh, let's say we had a 20 x to the fourth minus 5x cubed. And what we want to do is we want to factor this polynomial. Okay? So, like I said, I always start with the coefficients. This thing is going to be equal to something. So, 20 and 5. Both of them are multiples of 5. Uh, that's the greatest common multiple of both of them. So, we want to pull out a 5. And now we want to look at the variables. Well, I've got three x's over here, and I've got four x's over here. Since they both have at least three, I can pull out an x cubed. Can't pull anything else out. So now we have to ask ourselves, 5x cubed times what gives us a 20x to the fourth? I need a 4x. 
and this is the tricky part. 5x cubed times what is a negative 5x cubed? Well, I need a negative 1. This part right here is the part that students typically mess up. Uh, a lot of times students will put a plus 0, they'll put a minus 0. A lot of students uh, will, will kind of struggle in the beginning with what to put here when we factor everything out. Um, another example, let's say we had something like, oh, we can say 6x squared plus 3x. The same thing. I start with my coefficients. Well, I got a 3, I've got a 6. I can at least pull a 3 out of both of those. So I'll pull out a 3. Now we go to our variables. I've got 1x and I've got 2x's. They all have at least 1x, so I can pull out 1x. Put a parenthesis. 3x times what is 6x squared? I need a 2x. And 3x times what is equal to 3x? Well, I need a plus 1. It's getting comfortable with putting the plus 1, and it's a plus 1 this time, because we had a plus over here. Or the minus 1, and it's a minus because of this sign right here. You always leave behind kind of like a footprint. There's, there's something, you always need to leave something behind, I'll say it like this. So when you distribute, you need to be able to get back to your original. Um, I can't think of a situation off the top of my head where you, were fact where you will factor something and get a plus zero floating around inside of your factor. That, uh, I, like I said, I can't think of a situation where that'll happen. Um, plus ones and minus ones, they, they happen, uh, they, they happen, uh, and students, like I said, they will, uh, this part, this part can be a little tricky. I will, I will leave it at that. So let's, let's move on to the next example. We got one more of these. Um, let's say we had... 12x squared y minus 20x cubed y. And we want to factor this thing. Well, we're going to start again. We want to start with the leading coefficients, or at least that's where I always start. Oh, we've got a 12 and we've got a 20. A uh, 4 can be pulled out of both of a 12 and a 20. So we will do that. And then, okay, so now we move on to our variables. I've got two x's over here, and I've got three x's over here. They both ha at least have two x's, so I can factor out two x's. And they both also happen to have a y, so I can factor out a y. And now we have to figure out what is left over after we factor this factor out of this term. Well, 4x squared y times 3 is equal to 12x squared y, and 4x squared y times a negative 5x is equal to a negative 20x cubed y. So you ask ourselves what's common, what can be pulled out. Uh, when there's more than one variable, just work your way down the row. Uh, deal with the first variable, then deal with the second variable. If there were three, then you would move on to the third. Um, Let's, let's do something else. Let's say you didn't realize that 4 went into 12 and went into 20 as well. So, in math there's always this emphasis on the greatest common factor, but you can build up to the greatest common factor. You don't need the greatest common factor first. You can take smaller steps to get there. So let's say, let's say you, you only saw that both of these numbers were even, so you thought you could pull a 2 out of both of those numbers. It's completely correct, nothing wrong with that. And let's say you saw that, uh, let's say you only pulled out an x and a y as compared to an x squared and a y. Let's see what that would look like. 
Well, 2xy times 6x would be equal to a 12x squared y, and a 2xy times a negative 10x squared y would equal a negative 20x cubed y. But now that we've, we've broken down this big polynomial into a smaller polynomial, now if you look, now it might be easier to see, it might be easier to notice and go, oh, 6 is even, 10 is even, I can pull out another 2. Well, that would be 2. And then if you notice that they both have an x, let's pull out that common x too. So we would have that 2x, uh, and I want to write it, I want to write it here. We're going to copy that 2xy down first, times, now we're going to pull a 2x out of both of these terms. And then what's left over? Well, 2x times 3 would give us a 6x, minus 2x times a 5, uh, and I shouldn't have written that y, I'm sorry, times a negative 5 x would give us a negative 10x squared. And now our final step is to is to gather like terms out front. 2xy times 2x would give us a 4x squared y. That would still be times 3 minus 5x. So yes, this, this process down here had an extra step. Um, I did it just to illustrate the fact that you don't have to pull out the greatest common factor first. You can pull out a common factor and then another common factor and kind of take uh, take, I don't want to use the term baby steps, but you take, you take smaller steps through the problem. I personally, this is the way I think. I pull out the smallest thing I can first. Um, it's just easier. I make less mistakes building up to the correct answer as compared to trying, doing to, uh, trying to get to it on my first attempt. Okay, so two bits, two bits of, uh, Vocab. That's the word I'm looking for. So we've got two vocabulary terms for you. Uh, one is factored completely. Factored completely. Uh, this kind of has an intuitive definition. One is something factored completely. Well, when you can't pull any more factors out of it. This polynomial right here, or this step, we have factored this polynomial completely. We can't pull out a common factor from 3 and 5, and we don't have any common variables between these terms. So we are factored completely. In fact, when we factor a polynomial completely, we reduce it to the product of prime factors. So let's, let's see where we started. So we factored completely x squared plus 5x plus 6 into the product of the prime factors x plus 2 and x plus 3. Um, we factored 5x cubed minus 15x squared plus 5x completely into the product of the prime factors 5x and x squared minus 3x plus 1. Uh, factored completely into prime factors. Uh, factored completely into prime factors and factored completely into prime factors. Kind of like how you can say that the number, uh, we'll say 6, is equal to the product of prime numbers 2 times 3. You can break down a polynomial into the product of prime factors. So going forward, I want to tell you about a convention we have when it comes to factoring polynomials. Um, let's take the polynomial negative 4x minus 24. And so we have this convention. When the leading coefficient, our leading coefficient, is negative, we factor out a negative number. So, our leading coefficient is negative. I, and then I can pull out a 4 from both of these terms. More importantly, I can pull out a negative 4. We ask ourselves, well, negative 4 times what is a negative 4x? Now, okay, I need a positive 
x. And negative 4 times what is negative 24? Well, I need a positive 6. So when our leading coefficient is negative, it's common for us to factor it out, minus sign and all. Similarly, if we had a uh, negative 2x squared plus 6x minus 10, and I go, okay, our leading coefficient is negative. All of these numbers are even. I can pull out that entire negative 2, so let's do that. We're going to pull it out, minus sign and all, negative 2, and so variables, let's check that. We've got two x's here, one x here, and no x's here. So there aren't any variables I can pull out along with this negative 2. So negative 2 times what is negative 2x squared? Well, negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Uh, negative 2 times what is a positive 6x? Well, I would need a negative 3x. And negative 2 times a positive 5 is equal to negative 10. Notice how we went from a negative, to, we went from a negative positive negative to positive negative positive. All of our signs flip-flopped. When you pull out a negative number, all your signs are going to switch. So, let's keep going. Uh, so, a, a water rocket launched upward with an initial velocity of 96 feet per second. So, we've got some model rocket. This is my rocket, a water rocket. And it got launched up, and it'll eventually come back down, with an initial velocity of 96 feet per per second. In this problem, we know that the height of the rocket as a function of time is equal to a negative 16 t squared plus 96 t. And so we want to do, we want to do two things with this polynomial. The first thing we want to do is we want to find an equivalent expression for h of t by factoring out a common factor with a negative coefficient. So that'll be the first thing we do. Uh, we want to find an equivalent expression by factoring out the leading coefficient. Uh, since it's negative, we're going to pull out the minus sign as well. So h of t is equal to o and then so we can actually pull out an entire negative 16. 16 is a factor of 96. Um, we'll get to that in a second. And both of these terms have at least one t. So I can pull out a t along with the negative 16. If I pull a negative 16 t out of negative 16 t squared, well, that leaves behind just a t. And then if we pull out a negative 16t, this sign is going to switch to a minus sign. Get out of here. A negative 16 times a negative 6 is equal to a positive 96. So, we have factored this polynomial into this equivalent polynomial, and we factored out, we factored out the minus sign along with the leading coefficient. Let's make sure that these two are the same. Let's, let's check a point. In fact, let's see, I will call this h uh, sub 1, and I'll call this h sub 2. So let's see what h1 is equal to when t is equal to, say, 2. Well, it would be equal to a negative 16 times 2 squared plus 96 times 2. Well, that would be equal to a negative 16 times a 4, uh, plus 96 times 2. That would give us a 2, 192. We need 16 times 4, 24, 64. So this would be equal to a negative 64 plus 192. 
192. Uh, we need to do that. So 192 and a 64. If we subtract those, uh, that would give us an 8. That would give us a 2. That would give us a 1. So this is equal to a positive 128. We want to do the same thing for h of our h sub 2. So h, or the second equation, evaluated when t is equal to 2, is equal to negative 16 times 2 times 2 minus 6. Negative 16 times 2, well that's negative 32 times 2 uh, take away 6 is negative 4. And 32 times 4 uh, is equal to 128, and minus times minus will cancel each other out to give us a positive 128. So, we've demonstrated in this one problem that by factoring out the, by factoring this polynomial, uh, we aren't changing the values it gives any. This is really to illustrate the fact that these two polynomials are equivalent. They're just written in slightly different forms. So I've got three more examples for you. Uh, we're moving on to factoring by grouping. We want to factor by grouping. Factoring by grouping is a very powerful technique. Um, it takes some time to get used to, though. Uh, so let's 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 start off over here. So yeah, we'll do. Let's say a minus b times x plus five plus an a minus b times an x minus a y squared. So in factor by grouping, what we want to do is we want to look for a common binomial. In each of these terms. They're terms because they're separated by addition. In this first term, we have a factor of a minus b. And in our second term, we have a factor of a minus b. What we want to do is we are going to factor out this common term. If we factor out an a minus b from a minus b times x plus 5, all that we're left over with is an x plus 5 this addition sign is going to drop. And if we factor an a minus b out of a minus b times x minus y squared, well, all that's left over is going to be an x minus y squared. So at this step here, we have factored out a common binomial from both of these terms. We're not done yet, however. We're going to simplify a minus b, that part is sticking around. And then I'm using square brackets really just to draw your eyes to the two separate pieces that we have. Um, x plus 5 plus x minus y squared. Well, I've got a x plus an x, so that would give me a 2x. I've got a constant term, plus 5, and we have a minus y squared. We have factored completely. Um, it doesn't Square brackets versus parentheses, that doesn't matter at all, actually. Yeah, unless you're programming, there's no difference between square braces and, or I'm sorry, between square brackets and parentheses. Um, I could have drawn this, this uh, factor with large parentheses, uh, so I could have written it as a minus b times x plus 5 plus x minus y squared. I like, I like using square brackets instead of larger parentheses. Um, 
it just, it's easier to group them in my eyes. I, I can look right here and go, okay, that bracket goes with that bracket. These parentheses go together and these parentheses over here. If I just have this long string of parentheses, I wind up picking one and figuring out where it closes and picking one and figuring out where it closes. Um, you don't have to use square brackets though. I just think that it's, it's easier to look at. It's easier on your eyes. <clears throat> so, Let's move on to another example of factor by group. 3x cubed minus 6x squared minus x plus 2. And the book kind of really just jumps at it. So my suggestion for you, when you're trying to factor something that has four terms, when you have four terms, think factor by grouping. Okay, and then write your polynomial with the powers decreasing in order. It doesn't always work that way, but while you're starting off, um, it might help you to do so. It's a good first attempt. It won't always give you the correct answer, but it's a good first step. So we have written these terms with their degrees in decreasing order. Degree 3, degree 2, degree 1, degree none. What we're trying to do in factor by grouping is we want to combine, sorry, let me write that. We want to group, that's where the grouping comes in. We want to group two of these terms together and another two of these terms together. Uh, we want to factor out something common from both of those terms and then we will be able to separate it further. So let's, let's give you, let's, let's work this problem out. I, so I'm looking at these first two terms. We've got a 3x cubed and a 6x squared. They've got a lot in common. Um, in fact, we can say this polynomial is equal to. Let's factor out the greatest common factor of both of these uh, terms. We can actually pull out a 3x squared from both of these terms. And what's left over, 3x squared times, well, x is a 3x cubed and a 3x squared minus 2 is equal to a 6x, a negative 6x squared. And now, in fact, if we put a minus sign here, let's group these terms together. But be careful going from this step over here. We want to subtract this entire quantity. So when we put a parenthesis right after a minus sign, all of these signs are going to switch. We're going to go from negative x to minus a positive x. And we're going to go from minus a positive 2 to minus a negative 2. I'm sorry, instead I said minus a negative 2. We're going to go from a negative x and a positive 2 to minus a positive x and a negative 2. There we go. So now Look at what we have in parentheses. We have this x minus 2 and that other x minus 2. Let's go ahead and pull it out and stick it out front. So, I've got an x minus 2. And we ask ourselves, what's common? Well, that x minus 2 and what's left over? We have a 3x squared, we have a minus, and we have a 1. Just like when we were doing these examples and we pulled a 5x cubed out of a 5x cubed how we got a minus 1 well if I pull an x minus 2 out of an x minus 2 I'm left with a minus 1 this is as simple as it'll go we we have completely factored this polynomial into the product of prime factors the big trick here is them throwing that minus sign to you so let's Let's do another example. Let's say we had 4x cubed minus 15 plus 20x squared minus 3x. Okay, so like before, I'm going to try and rewrite this polynomial so our powers are in decreasing order. So we get a 4x cubed uh, plus a 20x squared minus a 3x minus a 15. Okay. 
And now I want to group these first two terms and I want to group these last two terms. But be careful when we do that, we get a 4x cubed plus a 20x squared minus, and I'm going to put a parenthesis right after that minus sign. So instead of a negative 3x, we want to subtract a positive 3x. And instead of minus a 15, we want to subtract a positive 15. So we've grouped. And now we ask ourselves, okay, what's, what's the greatest common factor of this factor on the left? Well, I can pull out a 2x squared. When I pull out a 2x squared, I'm left with a 2x plus 1. And then over here, if I try and pull out, well, what if I pull out a 3? x plus 5. And we go, oh, that, that did not necessarily work. We can't pull out a common factor from both of these. So let's go ahead and try a different approach. Okay, so ordering them in decreasing order did not work. Well, what if we take that 4x cubed minus 15 plus 20x squared minus 3x, and let's try and rearrange this. Let's try and write this as a 4x cubed minus 3x. So we've got these two. And then we'll say plus 20x squared minus 15. So we want to do the same thing. We want to group the first two terms. And we want to group the second two terms. We don't have to be as cautious here because we have an addition sign separating these two groupings. When we have a minus sign, we have to be careful um, because of the distributive property. But over here, we don't have to be as cautious. So looking at these first two terms, we ask ourselves, well, what's common? What do they share? Well, 4 and 3, they're coprime. They don't have any, any common factors. But these two terms do share a common x. So let's factor that out. We'd have an x times a 4x squared minus 3. Um, and then over here, okay, uh, this plus sign is going to drop. And we ask ourselves, well, what's common? I got a 20x squared and a negative 15. I can at least pull a 5 out of both of those. And that would leave a 4x squared minus 3 left over. Perfect. That's what we wanted. Notice how these two terms, this term over here and this term over here, they share a common factor of 4x squared minus 3. Since they have that common factor, go ahead and pull it out. What do they have in common? 4x squared minus 3. What's left over? An x, a plus sign, and a 5. And that would be our final answer. In factoring by grouping, um, don't get discouraged if your first attempt doesn't work. Try and rearrange your polynomial and group them differently and see, see if that gets you anywhere. So before I set you free, um, I guess you can go and do your homework whenever you like. You're not waiting for me to dismiss you anymore. I do want to give you uh, a bit of warning about factoring. Factoring appears to be magic most of the time when people first start doing it. And I'm unaware uh, of how much experience you guys have factoring. Um, I, w I would ask you guys to raise your hand if you have experience with factoring or if you have what you would say a lot of experience with factoring. But I don't have that ability right now. When you guys are factoring, factoring is all about pattern recognition. Um, being able to recognize the pattern and being able to recognize the pattern and of equal importance being able to recognize when you didn't get a pattern. Um, pattern recognition is difficult. Pattern recognition takes time to get good at. Uh, that's why students factor I, uh, students are going to factor the entire time they're in math classes. I don't, I don't care if, you, uh, if you're in Math 105, I don't care if you're in college algebra or pre-calculus, and I don't care if you're in calculus or differential equations. Um, 
linear algebra even, you are, you are always going to be factoring. Mathematicians are always trying to come up with ways to break apart polynomials to see the smaller elements that, uh, that came together to, to build up to that larger polynomial. Um, so I want to say that point again. Pattern recognition takes time. Uh, you will need practice. Uh, for practice, go off and do 1 through 29 every other odd, and 37 through 53 odd. These ones are factoring by grouping. Take your time with these factor by grouping problems. Um, you might get frustrated at first. You have a week to do this assignment. Um, don't don't try or try not to let yourself get too discouraged. Like I said, it'll take time to recognize the patterns. Um, I'm aware that it takes time to recognize the patterns. Um, there are definitely harder questions you can be asked and easier questions to be asked. Um, I'm aware that you guys are learning, so don't don't get too worked up. Don't get too don't get too terrified of these. They take practice, and I know it takes practice. Um, speaking of practice, go off and do that homework assignment for practice. Is due a week from today, which is the. 22nd actually. Um, shoot me an email if you guys have any questions and I'll talk to you next time. Goodbye.